guns. What they fire, how they fire it, and how accurately or fast they fire it are some of the determining factors when it comes to adoption for militaries, police forces, and civilians alike. It also influences how games and media portrays them. Girls Frontline reflects this, much like many other games. Ammo and ration consumption, damage, evasion, accuracy, rate of fire, move speed, armor, crit rate, and the ammo count are all based on some aspect of the gun, whether it be broad enough to cover the entire class of firearm or down to the specifics of the firearm itself. This video will look at all six categories of firearms in GFL, compare and contrast them with other guns from the same category, as well as their real-life counterparts, and take a look at a few specific T-Dolls to see the reasoning behind their skills and stats. I obviously won't attempt to cover all 371 T-Dolls, so I'll be picking a small handful to analyze. Firstly, giving a general overview of the different attributes of the different categories of firearms, we start with the ammo and rations consumption. The handguns, or HGs, consume the least overall with 30 rations and ammo consumed per turn, while machine guns, or MGs, and shotguns, or SGs, are tied for highest consumption at 140 ammo and 90 rations, or 90 ammo and 140 rations respectively. There is some logic behind why the ammo and ration consumption are set to be this way, or at least I believe there is. HGs are lightweight and often used as sidearms, meaning that their real-life ammo consumption is comparatively low, while RFs stay in one area for an extended period of time and are meant to be precise weapons, which is shown in their high ration and relatively low ammo consumption. With MGs consuming a lot of ammo and rations because their use as emplacements, heavyweight, and as a tool of suppressing enemies. Damage skills in a similar way, as can be seen with this graph of the highest and lowest damaging T-Dolls from each category. Looking at the lowest and highest damage of each category, we have Calibri, which fires the 2.7 by 9mm, and Contender, which can fire the .4570 Government. SMGs have the CZ Scorpion the Evo 3 firing the 9x19mm at the low end, and the AK-74U firing 5.45x39mm at the high end. ARs with AS Val firing 9x39mm, and 6P62 firing 12.75x108mm. RFs with M1A1 firing 30 carbine, and NTW20 firing 20x82mm. MGs with Mark 46 firing 556 by 45 cord firing 12.7 by 108 mm and SGs with LTLX 7000 firing less than lethal 12 gauge and KS 23 firing 23 by 75 mm R the conclusions that can be drawn from this is that the overall weakest category of firearms are SMGs as the range of damage is only 12 compared to the second lowest SGs who have 17 SMGs, for the most part, are chambered in pistol-caliber cartridges, though notably there are carbines and PDWs that GFL considers to be SMGs, such as the previously mentioned AK-74U, as well as Honey Badger, X-95, KAC PDW, G-36C, and so on, are chambered in intermediate cartridges or something similar. The highest range of 70 is, unsurprisingly, RFs as the different RFs use anywhere from the 45 ACP cartridge up to the mass of 20 by 82 mm normally used in auto cannons. But there are anomalies with some of the damage stats for RFs, such as the M1A1 carbine firing the 30 carbine cartridge having a lower damage than the Delisle carbine, which fires the 45 ACP pistol cartridge. Accuracy and evasion seem to go hand in hand for GFL, as the more lightweight and logically accurate weapons are going to have much higher stats respective to what they're better at. HGs and SMGs are often on the lighter side, as can be seen with the graph shown, so they have more evasion, with RFs being more accurate due to them being used for precise firing, while MGs and SGs are on the heavier side and less accurate. The lightest gun, weighing in at 0.22 kilograms, the Calibri, logically has the highest evasion in the game at 128. While the heaviest, the M2HB with included tripod, weighs in at 58 kilos and has the lowest evasion at 16. The most accurate, unsurprisingly, is an RF, in particular the SVCH, a modern DMR, while the least, again unsurprisingly, is a shotgun, the KS-23 which is known for using defective aircraft gun barrels. 
Weight also applies broadly to the move speed of the different categories, the lightest HTs having the highest move speed at 15, and the heaviest MGs having a move speed of 4. Crit rate is simple, but again, logical. RFs and SGs have the highest crit rate because, logically, they're going to be aiming for critical points, such as the head, or be used in close quarters combat, or they'll be doing a lot of damage, respectively. The lowest, SMGs and MGs, again, aren't known or used for their accurate fire, but instead their volume of fire. Ammo count is specific to MGs and SGs, meaning that they'll need to reload after their magazine is empty. The total amount in the magazine isn't realistic either, as you have MGs that can be fed from large ammo boxes, such as MG5 only having 11 ammo, while ones fed from box magazines, such as M1918, have 8 to 9. Shotguns do make a bit more sense, but there are discrepancies, such as AA-12 having 5 ammo total, while her gun is loaded with a 20 round magazine. Or the 612 shotgun, a shotgun that has a revolver cylinder that holds 6 shells, having an ammo count of 4. I believe these ammo counts are for balancing reasons more than anything else. Going down into the mechanics of the guns themselves and comparing them to other firearms in the same category, we start with handguns, more specifically ones with a slower rate of fire or higher damage compared to others. On the lower end of the rate of fire scale, there's a noticeable pattern. That being that the slower firing HGs are mainly comprised of single shot breech loading HGs, revolvers both single and double action, multi round breech loading HGs, and high caliber HGs. For example, a single action revolver such as SAA or M1895 fires much more slowly due to having to cock the hammer before firing to cycle the cylinder as well as ready the firing hammer, compared to a semi automatic or automatic capable firearm such as Stechkin or 5.7. This similarly can be found in RFs and SGs alike, with similar principles carrying over from HGs. RFs come in both single shot bolt action, magazine fed bolt action, and semi automatic variants, with RFs such as M14, G43, and SL8 being near the top of the list as they are semi automatic, while PTRD, NTW20, and Gephard M1 all have high caliber and bolt action, with two of them being single shot. For SGs, the lower end is occupied by lever action or older pump action shotguns, such as M1887 and M1897, though interestingly M6ASW, an over-under break action shotgun, is more towards the middle of the pack when it comes to rate of fire. Unsurprisingly, however, is the abundance of magazine-fed semi-automatic and automatic shotguns, such as AA-12, M1014, and Saiga-12 being at the top of the rate of fire list. Calibers are the main basis of which damage is determined from, with the smaller calibers doing less damage than the larger ones. Going back to Calibri, who has a damage stat of 15, the lowest amount in the game, due to the caliber being 2.7 by 9mm, and comparing her to the top few, being Contender, Thunder, Desert Eagle, and Python, presumably firing the 4570 Government, 50 Browning Machine Gun, 50 Action Express, and 44 Magnum respectively. 4570 Government and 50 Browning Machine Gun are rifle and machine gun calibers, which is no surprise as to why they deal so much damage, with all four out damaging the top four SMGs. The SMGs are a strange case for the most part, as they mainly use pistol calibers. As previously mentioned though, the highest damaging SMGs are ones such as AK-74U, X-95, KAC-PDW, and G-36C all of which fire rifle calibers or something more powerful than a pistol cartridge. ARs are similar to SMGs in the fact that there's not much variation in the damage, due to most using standardized NATO or Eastern Bloc calibers, but as always there's exceptions to the rule, with ARs that fire either non-standard intermediate cartridges or pre-standardized cartridges, such as 6P62 firing the 12.7 by 108 mm ASH 12.7 firing 12.7 by 55 mm or the Fedorov firing the 6.5 by 50 mm SR. ARs that fire 762 by 51 mm NATO, such as RFB, FAL, and MDR, are on the higher end of the damage scale as well. On the lower end of the scale, we have integrally suppressed weapons such as the ASVAL and 9A91, who fire the 9 by 39 mm cartridge possibly subsonic if they want to be stealthy, and many ARs that fire 5.56x45mm NATO. 
SGs and MGs, again, are similar to previous sections. Less than lethal purpose shotguns like LTLX 7000 are near the bottom, while higher gauges like KS-23 are near the top. MGs have ones that fire 5.56 NATO or 7.62 NATO or Soviet near the bottom, such as M249 SAW and Negev, while Cord, M2HB, Lewis, Shosha, and M1918, which fire the 12.7 by 108 mm, 50 BMG, 303 British, 8 by 50 mm R Labelle, and 30-06 Springfield are near the top of the list. RFs are where it gets interesting, as they fire a wide variety of different calibers as previously mentioned. For visual reference, we have three of the lowest damage RFs, SM1, Simonov, and Type 56R, their calibers, their damage stat, and the ranges they're effective to. We also have the top three of the highest damage RFs, NTW20, DSR50, and IWS2000, their calibers, their damage stat, and their maximum effective ranges. Quite a stark difference between all of them. Finally, we arrive at the skills. Though there are plenty of generic skills, such as ones that raise damage, rate of fire, evasion, and so on, we'll be looking at skills unique to individual T-Dolls, as they more often than not have some reference to the history or particular use of the gun during its service history. We also won't be going over every unique skill, as that will take too long, but we will cover quite a few. If you have fringe theories about connections, I don't want to hear them, or why the character you like wasn't mentioned. Covering some of the T-Dolls that have a neural upgrade first, we have AN-94 and her base skill Hyper Trigger. The details come less from its name and more from the description of the passive effect of the skill, being that the first attack on a new target will hit them twice, much like how the recoil shifted pulse action works on the AN-94 itself. SAA's Mod 2 skill, Dual Survivor, is an obvious reference to the duels that occurred in the Wild West of the United States where the Colt Single Action Army was a popular choice of firearm for the period. KSVK with her concussive strike slash blast may originate from the large concussive force that comes from the 12.7 by 108 mm projectile that she fires, as at maximum force it releases 360 megapascal pressure units, or about 52,000 psi. Though also a reference to the cleaning implements she gets in her neural upgrade, M1897's burst cleaning is most likely referring to M1897 being used as a trench sweeping weapon, with sweeping also being like how you clean. The burst may be a reference to the slam fire ability, that is to hold down the trigger of an M1897 while continually cocking the slide to rapidly fire the gun. Mosin-Nagant's second skill, Pure White Reaper, is a homage to one of the deadliest snipers in history, Simo Haya, who fought for the Finnish during the Winter War between Finland and the USSR, where he used his Finnish variant of the Mosin-Nagant rifle, the M2830, to kill an estimated 500 soldiers. A special equipment of hers, the Haya memory chip, also references this. M1895's 7-tone Peon is inspired by the 7-round cylinder of the M1895 Nagant revolver. Not super creative in my opinion. PPSH 41's second skill, Million Metals, is possibly referring to the Order of the Patriotic War, the war that the PPSH 41 was most used in, as over 1 million medals were awarded to those who fought for the USSR against the Germans and performed heroic deeds, later being awarded to all veterans. Stetchkin's second skill, Castanet Percussion, is likely based off the firearm's high firing rate and how it sounds similar to the percussion instrument's castanets. Stenmark II's hand grenade is in reference to Josef Gabik and Jan Kubis, who assassinated Reinhard Heydrich using an anti-tank grenade, both of whom were armed with stens. And Type 97S's second skill, Anti-Riot Special Attack, references the shotgun's use as a riot suppression or control tool. As for the T-Dolls without a neural upgrade, there doesn't seem to be many that have skills based on the firearm itself or its history instead of having the generic boost to different stats, or a skill relevant to the character, or even ones with strange names in general. WKP's skill, Nightfire, is in reference to her use as a flare gun, doubly so that the active part of the skill can only be used during the night. Derringer's Covert Killer skill references her gun's use as a concealed carry weapon, as the gun she wields could easily fit into a coat pocket. The skill also passively fires two shots, the number of bullets, her Derringer could carry. Calibri's Hummingbird Resonance refers to the German word for a hummingbird, Calibri, as it was the smallest of the known birds at the time. 
Rhino's Daredevil Roulette is most likely a reference to the game of Russian Roulette, instead of any piece of history, as revolvers or any other firearm with a cylindrical magazine is what's used in the game. The Daredevil part most likely comes from those who play it, as they risk their lives in doing so. AK-74M's Katusha is based on the same named Russian folk song that's used for military marching. The effects of the skill only affect Russian titles, specifically those of AK platforms such as AK-47, AK-12, and AK-74U. K2's overheat could possibly reference the issue that K2C variants had with overheating even though the barrel was fairly exposed. Notably, the K2C wields is not a K2C. SIG MCX's electroshock gear could be in reference to the AR often being used by police forces who also wield tasers, though it may be in reference to her previous career as a police officer. AR-57's complex modification most likely refers to the construction of the firearm itself, that being parts of an AR-15 that takes P90 magazines and fires the 5.7x28mm round. CMS's fickle temper allows her to switch between ammunition types, which the CMS can do as well. By simply changing the magazine and barrel, the CMS can fire either the 9x19mm Parabellum or 6.5x25mm CBJ though it may be referring to the subsonic and spoon tip types of the 6.5x25mm. The Lyle silent marking probably refers to the carbine's integral suppressor and use of subsonic ammunition to make the firearm as quiet as possible. Savage 99's hunting time probably is in reference to how the firearm was used by hunters when it was released. TAC-50's Maple Firefly references the use of the TAC-50 by the Canadian Armed Forces with its most notable use being that it holds the record for the longest recorded sniper kill at 3,540 meters. Shosha's lily emblem refers to the fleur de lis, which means lily flower and is a national symbol of France. TS-12's rotating magazine is an obvious reference to how her magazine works, as her magazine is a sort of combination of a revolver cylinder and a shotgun tube magazine being able to go to the next tube when the current one is empty by rotating it. And finally, M1887's terminating shot is probably a reference to the famous use of the lever-action shotgun in the Terminator 2 movie, as Arnold Schwarzenegger uses it in the motorcycle scene. Her firing animation also references this. As you can see, there's a significant amount of real-world influence on mostly the stats of the T-Dolls and some of the skills. Though there is some deviance with SMGs and RFs, for example, most of the calibers used, general purpose of the type of weapon, weight, rate of fire, and so on, influence how hard something hits, how fast it fires, its evasion, and so on in the game. Thank you for watching. Feel free to follow my Twitter for updates, and please take a look at my Azure Lane and Arknights content as well. Speaking of Arknights, the next video will be on the effects of Oropathy on operators.